Hi, in this video, I will go over Gaussian process regression. There is a bit of a prerequisites, which is multivariate normal distribution and the Bayesian framework. If you don't have these, then you might not completely understand some of the steps in the derivation, and you'll have to take them for granted. But I hope you manage to follow along anyway. In this video, I will show four different ways of arriving at the final equations, and then go over some Python code that implements them. I will also post links to the source material in the video description. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and also consider supporting me on Stay. Okay, so what is the objective? Um, like in any regression, the objective is you have some data, you have some points, and you have, you have some predictor variable x and some response variable y. And here I'm showing this when x is one dimensional, but it can also be that x is uh, two dimension or even more. And you have some points that you know, okay? But they are, you are trying to find uh, a structure. You're trying to find uh, a function that fits these points, okay? Now, there can be more than one function. Here, it's like the function that actually generated these points. Yeah, it's the sinus function but there can be many functions that pass through only these five points. Here I show some of them. So in the, this bluish thing, it's the same function as before. It's just a bit squished. And there are many other functions in different colors here. Here I draw three that pass through these five points. Okay, so Gaussian process in a way is a distribution over function because you take, um, you can draw a, di a different function and that passes through these points, okay? And also these function passes exactly through the points, but it can also, the Gaussian process regression can also be uh, generalized to uh, functions that also have some noise and uh, they don't pass exactly in the point, they try to pass close to the point, et cetera. So what are those equations that we will arrive in the end? So uh, we will have two uh, parameters. We will have a mean parameter, mu, and we will have a variance covariance uh, parameter, a matrix, which will be denoted by V, yeah? So how do we arrive at this mu? So mu is in the end, a combination of the values that we already have. So we have some data and we have those y values for them. So the mu that we will uh, generate will be some combinations of those y, of those y's. And these combination will be weighted by some matrix. And how we will weight these matrix? Well, one part, one component in the matrix will be the interaction between the x's of the data that we already have, of our training data. Okay, how are these axes related to each other, how much they are close to one another, etc. And another part will be how much of the new points that we want to sample. And what I mean by new point is that all the points in the graph where we don't have the values to. How much of all these points, how much are they correlated, how much are they related to the points that we do have in our data, in our training data, okay? And you can see that if we were to put uh, the same points that we have, then this thing over here, if we, if we were to put K instead of this K star, then K times K minus one will cancel and we will get just Y. So if we put the same points that we already know uh, and we calculate these relations between them, we will just get that our mean is the actual points. In that respect, uh, all of our functions that we will uh, draw will have to pass through the points because if we give the same point, if we give the same points as our training data points, then we will get exactly the y's. And also what will happen here in the variance, if I replace uh, k star and k double star with k, I will get zero here, okay? Because they will the k minus one uh, times k will cancel and here, we will get k minus k and we'll get zero, okay? And what will be this covariance matrix? Well, it will be some covariance matrix that captures 
the relations between the new points and themselves, minus some covariance matrix that captures the relation between the new points and the old points. And what this thing over here does, it kind of reduces the variance for points that are closer to the points that we already know the values of. Okay, so once we have the mean, we can draw uh, a line which will represent the mean of uh, our function, the mean of all the different functions that are possible. And the variance, well, we can take for each point a certain uh, uh, its standard deviation. For each point, we can calculate a confidence interval of how much we are sure about the value at that point. And so what we will get, we will get some confidence interval around the graph, which will be zero at the points that we know and will grow as we uh, go away and go further away from the points that we know. Okay, so these are the general form of the equations that we are trying to get. How do we get them? Well, the first way, the first view of the situation is the view I call the kernel first view. Okay, and we uh, presume that there is some structure to our data. There is some relations between the response variable and our axis, our predictor variable, uh, which we are trying to fit. And we also, in the first uh, case, we will consider a noiseless relation. So there is no more noise. If the, the values of y's that we did observe are the exact values of the function. Okay. And in this view, the Gaussian process is uh, defined as an infinite space of uh, Gaussian variables, where you can take any subset of uh, points in that space, and they all distribute Gaussian, and they distribute multivariate uh, normal Gaussian distribution together. Um, but they have some mean, mx, and some uh, kernel function, which says how much they are connected to one another. Okay, how much they are, if I take a point here and a point here, uh, they both will be Gaussians, but there will be, there will be some relation between them. Yeah, there will be some covariance between them. So the kernel function is also a covariance function. And in the kernel first view, you, we first define this kernel matrix. Okay, and in this example, uh, I will define the kernel to be the squared exponential function which means uh, for each two points, if the points are exactly the same, I will give it a kernel value of one, okay? And if the points become very, very, very far away, then uh, in the limit, I will give it a value of zero, okay? Because if this and this are equal, then we have zero here and e to the power of zero is one. And if this is very far away from this, then this whole thing becomes very big and e to the minus infinity is zero. So uh, this is what we get. And what does this function mean? It means that we, it gives us smoothness, okay? It gives us that points that are very close will have almost the same values and points that are very far, it, the values are not related anymore. Okay, so what we can do now is take all the points that we do have and calculate a, a kernel matrix. So uh, we calculate for each point, the kernel function with the other point. So again, for the diagonals, we will get ones. And for the off diagonals, we will get some number between zero and one, okay? And now that we have these kernel function and we have, we assume that the mean for simplicity is zero, then we can just draw a function from this distribution because we define a kernel function, we have a covariance and uh, we have the mean, we can just draw from a multivariate normal. So these graphs that you see here, these three lines are just 50 points that I drew. I gave them an X, the X was equidistance between minus five and five. And I computed for each X, the kernel, the uh, covariance matrix. And then I drew from a 50 dimension multivariate normal distribution and I got the uh, y values. But because uh, the covariance matrix made a smooth relation between them, you can see that if I plot these y values corresponding to the x values, you get a smooth function, okay? Because 
if I am in this point over here, then the next point, which is close to me, can't be far away from me in the y values. It can't be here. Okay, it has to be somewhere close to here. Okay, so this is what the covariance function, as we define it with this uh, kernel, gives us. It gives us this smoothness. And we can call this uh, Gaussian process prior because we do this before we have any data. We just define the kernel function and we draw uh, functions from it and we plot them. So it's just a prior over all the possible functions that exist in the, uh, with, which have a mean zero and these covariance and this covariance matrix. But of course, this is not very interesting. We want to incorporate the data that we do have. So um, we can think of it as if we have two vectors of data. Uh, and one vector I will denote as f of x, and the other will be I'll denote as f of x star. And the property of multivariate normal is that since they are all part of, uh, they all distribute multivariate normal together, then they will uh, have a zero mean and they, they will have a covariance matrix with the following structure. Uh, he, in the first uh, block, you will have the kernel only for x and x. Uh, in the last, in the bottom right part, you will have the kernel only for x star and x star. And for the uh, two other parts, you will have the uh, kernel of x and x star or it's transpose, which will be the kernel of x star and x. Okay, and this is a property of multivariate normal distribution. Okay, and another very important uh, property of the multivariate normal, suppose we have um, a vector that I, um, separated into two parts, x and y, and it distributes multivariate normal like this, then the conditional distribution, the conditional meaning the y, given that I already know what the x's are, will distribute multivariate normal with this thing over here. And I will post a link in the description that proves it. But this is the, this is the formula that we will use. So we have this general structure but now suppose that I do know the values f of x, then our posterior, our uh, values of f of x star, given that I know f of x, will distribute according to this uh, um, equation, this formula, like this, okay? The, uh, if you just put zero instead of mu y and all the relevant parts, you will get this thing over here. Okay, so this is the equation we need in the case of the noiseless data. Okay, but what happens if we do want to add some noise? What if we say that the values that we see, we observe of y's, are not the actual value of the function. There is some noise that is added to it. Okay, so we can model it like this. We can say that f y is equal to f of x plus some noise. And the noise, for we can assume that it distributes normal with some sigma squared. Okay, and f is, uh, again, distributes normal with uh, some k covariance matrix. So what will be the sum? The sum will also be normal and it will distribute normal with uh, the same, uh, the sum of the mean. And because we also assume that the uh, sigma squared and f are independent, then the variance will be just k plus sigma squared i. Okay, so now how will our y and fx star distribute, say before we observe them? they will distribute like this, okay? We just add this thing, okay? We just added this thing over here to the general uh, matrix that we had before. And now we do exactly the same thing. We calculate the posterior and the posterior will distribute like this, where for the F, I denoted F bar to be, um, to be this equation over here and V bar to be this equation over here. And notice that now, even if I take uh, the same points as before, I will not get exactly y because, because of this term over here, I will get something that is a bit different from y. And the same here, that I will, I will have some variance uh, even if I take the same points. And now once we have this, we can, um, first of all, we can plot the mean for our new data points. And the mean will be just the mean of all the possible function. And in this case, it doesn't have to pass exactly through the points, depending how big the sigma squared will be. If it's very small, it will pass close to the points. If 
if it's big, then it might pass far away from the point. Okay, um, and we can also again plot for each point uh, the confidence interval for that point and how much we are sure about it. Okay, so this was the kernel first view, and you can even generalize it a bit more. You can have that uh, the kernel has some, uh, I called it sigma square var, var and some L here. Yeah, so for example, if L is uh, very small, then the uh, relations between X uh, disappears very quickly. Okay, we if um, you go just a little bit further, then it's already that you are, um, there is almost no connection between the two axes. But if L is very big, then the uh, relation is uh, stronger also for bigger distances. And we will see this in the code also. Okay, so this was the um, kernel view. 